So thanks everyone for uh, uh, joining the this uh, weekly session on on Python. And uh, I'm just going to go very quickly through through the agenda of what we're going to do today. Uh, let me share my screen. So today's session, uh, we've been sponsored by uh, Primera Resources and OpenSIM Technology. And uh, what we're going to do today, it's uh, we'll have a, a brief uh, introduction of a session, pretty much what I'm doing at the moment. We are going to have a, a bit of um, an, uh, a review of uh, Discover Both and Ankit Bansal, who has kindly volunteered to, to do part of the presentation. Um, then we will go to uh, an overview of the ball field. And uh, after that, we will go and check uh, what data is available and see what we can do with that data. And uh, based on our estimate, uh, we think that we can do probably three exercises, two or three exercises. So Ankita will be doing a, an exercise using a last file. And uh, I will be doing a couple of exercises, one on the deviation service extracted from the PDF files and another one using a um, measure while drilling the data, extract, extracting a pressure information that uh, will be relevant later on in, an, in other sessions. So today it's uh, going to be Ankit doing uh, the, the introduction, talking about himself and, and discoverevolve.com and uh, myself towards the end of, uh, of a presentation. So without further ado, I'm going to leave uh, the floor to, to one kid. Hey, can uh, you, you can share your screen now. Yeah. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, I'm Ankit, uh, and I support a blog called uh, discoverwall.com. Uh, so I'm so over that blog, we talk about the wall oil field. We try to uh, we try to introduce the community about the data set and also make it easy for them to understand the data set when they try to go through it. So that's our primary aim. Uh, I think just look at the wrong screens. Yeah, we can see, I can see your screen. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Okay, now I think you can see the whole screen. Right? Yes, there is that black, that black box. Oh yeah, yeah, much better. Yeah. You have to minimize that uh, the the square yeah. from from uh -huh. exactly. from okay. teams. I think you have uh -huh. to minimize that uh, that box from teams at the bottom bottom right. Uh -huh. Bottom right. There is, there okay, is a, yeah. that, 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 yeah, minimize that because it's, uh, it's showing, okay, yeah. yeah, that's much okay. better. Thank you. Okay. So to start off this, uh, the, the fall data was published by Equinor and the data set is currently owned by Equinor, Exxon, Payon Gas, and, 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 NPD. The the data is published on the Equinor website. It is governed by by the terms and conditions defined by by Equinor. Overall, it's a Creative Com Commons license. Uh, they they say very clearly that the data set should not be resold, and if shared, the the data owners should be attributed. Okay. 
so now coming to the valve data set uh, this uh, it is it is close to the to orve and this uh, and and this oil field was discovered in march 1993 we are 15919 sr was the first well the field operates at a water depth of 80 meters it had a maximum production rate of 1358 meter cube per day and the well was shut down in and the oil field was shut down in september 2016 by then it had produced almost 10 million cubic meters of oil if you if you look at the map on the lower right you see that valve is a pretty small field uh, here i re re represented with a plus sign over here so it's a very small field compared to the fields that that are that are close to it like the that the like the slightner west and the slightner east now coming to the structure cross section area oil was discovered in the hugin formation this formation has an average thickness of of uh, of uh, of 818 meters uh, this structure has a it's a dome like structure it 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 has a very good net to gross ratio of 0.924 the porosity is 22.6% the permeability found in the core sample they taken from the 59919 sr the maximum permeability was was around 3000 milli darcs and the water saturation was 11% the structure is highly faulted uh, but but then it is seen that it is comparatively less faulted compared to to the fields that are that are closer to it uh so over here if you look at the 5919 sr which was the first well discovered in the wall uh, uh, drilled in the wall oil field you see that they have comparatively less number of faults it is seen that that in the in the overall structure of the basin the faults have an north south and a, 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 a north east south west and a north west south east uh, south east orientation over here at the lower left is an image of the simulation mod model we will also try to show the faults seen in in the st structure in terms of the development plan, uh, plan they they had a, had a most inspired jacob to plat platform to both drill and produce a uh, storage ships were 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 used to store and transport the oil and the gas was directly transfer directly transferred to the slighter d subsidy template when the first well was drilled it was seen that the reservoir had very little or no aquifer support but then over time they found that they did have aquifer support uh, yet since the support is still weak since the aquifer support was still weak and not up to the mark they had drilled three water injection wells i'm sorry this is wrong these they had drilled three water injection wells and they had an injection rate of around 16000 meter meter cube per day they have got they have got primarily two different fluid fluid regions where the properties are slightly different uh, but then when you go and look at the simulation model they they do divided 
divide this further into eight different regions. Now, coming to the stratigraphy, when we look at the well logs, uh, we would be looking at the Hugin formation that uh, the formation where where the formation producing oil in the valve oil field. This formation is further divided into three parts. That's the upper Hugin, the middle Hugin, and the lower Hugin formation. It is seen that the that, that the middle Hugin has a higher uh, permeability and 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 further acts as a as a thief zone. Uh, when we uh, when we do uh, when we look at the effects of water injection. Now coming to the production profile, the line that's green shows the oil rate. It's we see we see a ramp up, then a plat plateau, and then a decline. In terms of uh, pressure, the uh, the orange line shows that that due to poor aquifer support. It it could not it 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 saw a drop in the reservoir pressure, but then once uh, but then due to water in injection we could maintain the overall pressure of the reservoir. It, uh, it, uh, in terms of the water cut, we we started seeing water. Water from from 20, 2010 and and then late, later became pretty stable. Okay, now coming to the data types in the valve data set, you have the drilling data. This data is in the WIT SML format. Here we have the daily drilling report. We have the rig activity report. We have the cementation data and the wellbore trajectory in terms of well logs uh, well, well logs are in last format uh, ascii format uh, here we have the density logs image logs pressure transient tests well bore integrity logs uh, production logs uh, vertical seismic uh, profile logs and then uh, in terms of production data, we have got the flow rates, pressures. Uh, after that, we have got two, two, uh, two uh, reports, the discovery report and the field development plan. We have got a simulation model that is based on Eclipse. Uh, and we have a, we have a, and we also have a, have a, have a, Geologic model that is based on RMS. Then we have seismic data uh, where we have got horizon selection based on two-way travel time fold folders. We have got earth modeling, attribute maps, and well picks. Uh, just a small brief on the on the discover wall uh, blog. Here we uh, here we work work on three major domains, education, training, and research and knowledge. In terms of education, we try to create a course curriculum that can be used by a petroleum engineering or a geoscience student. We try to help educated educators, teachers, professors to have a better understanding of this data set. And we try to give students a complete exposure to a full field development study. That is right from the discovery to the field's abandonment. Uh, in terms of training, we try to provide a common uh, data set for professionals on which they can share and discuss their thoughts, their uh, ideas, 
and their experiences with different technologies. In terms of research, uh, we try to provide, we try to, we try to uh, make them aware to use a common data set where they can, where they can, uh, where they can uh, try their uh, their uh, research hypothesis and also publish their resource uh, uh, their research it's just like the sp10 sp1 uh, data sets that are currently used in the academy so this is all that i had up about the wall data set Okay, now I would uh, come to the well below section. Alejandro, or will you like to talk something before I skip up, skip to the well below section, or should I just move to it? Uh, no, uh, I think I think that's. Uh, I mean, I can show a bit of the folders if you want. Uh, might sure. be inter interesting to see if if you want. I can do that. Uh, sure. Let me let me show you a bit of a structure of because that's interesting to um, to go directly to uh, to the data itself. Um, I think okay. So what you have in the in the folder when you download the folder you have uh, uh, you have um, the reports that Ankit uh, was uh, uh, talking about uh, quite comprehensive reports so they have a, a vol pud and they have a discovery uh, re report sorry if i don't don't know if you see the the actual uh, files um, then there is uh, all the with uh, real time data that he was uh, talking about uh, they have it uh, uh, per well. And uh, then you have uh, two kind of uh, data uh, data types uh, or, or organization of the well logs. Uh, the well logs are organized uh, in this uh, by the category of uh, of the well. So they have mod logging, uh, logging while, while drilling and uh, as well. And then inside those uh, folders you have a subfolder for every one of the uh, of the wells. So then you have the pressure pressure information, which is uh, I think mostly it's a uh, um, measure while drilling uh, data, and you have the actual report and then uh, a lot of uh, last files. Uh, you have a composite. Um, uh, last file and uh, there is some uh, reports, I guess. And then the, the petrophysical interpretation, again, more more last files uh, with the whole petrophysical interpretation, not only raw data. And I'm not quite sure what's the difference between the LFP. Oh, the LFP is just few few files, but they have the LFP petrophysics and they have the, the other uh, petrophysical uh, interpretation folder. Uh, what else they have? They have some uh, petrophysical images. They have some uh, thin cross, uh, uh, thin, uh, thin sections of a course, and I believe those are here in this uh, uh, core file. So they have it for for uh, one or two, three wells, with some interesting uh, pictures of a course. Which I'm, I'm thinking that uh, it might be interesting for someone to to. to get some of those pictures and, and get the, the ratio of the minerals that you have in every one of, of the thin sections and convert it to, to a proportion of a, of, a, of a mineral content and then uh, assign that to a particular our depth into in the log. Um, might be interesting to do something like that. Uh, they have some RSTs and uh, also uh, PLT. They have uh, the raw data. I don't know if uh, you can do much with the raw data, but they have it in, in there as well. And uh, I believe they have already the, the interpretation of the RST um, over there and the, the multiple RSTs or, or PLTs in some cases. So if I let me get another well. 
they have PLTs as well for some of those wells. Um, what else? Uh, integrity logs, biostrat data, they have biostratigraphy, they have uh, geo geochemistry as well. And uh, they have uh, the reports. And in those reports, you will find also um, the kind of uh, evolution of a, of a report from the drilling program, the original well proposal, up to the final end of well report, which is uh, uh, quite quite interesting documents to go through. They are the, the some of the original uh, files uh, provided by the service companies and uh, to Statoil and with some of the Statoil uh, views on, on the documents. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's about it from the point of view of uh, the well data reports and so on. And there is also for if you are in, in the interest of uh, building the model or evaluating the the, the model, uh, they have uh, the, the rest of the model itself, as Ankit mentioned, they have all the different files in in Eclipse format. Um, so you can and, and you can you can have a look at that model. And in fact, when you download the file, uh, they have they already provide a kind of base case uh, with uh, the files already run. So you can you can go straight and have a look at the results. Probably use rest inside. Uh, they have it, the geophysical interpretation where mainly they have a fault polygons, a false interpretation, horizons. And, and I don't know, wells, I, I didn't see much information here about the wells. But, and they have a RMS model. Uh, it would be nice if, uh, I think there are some people that have some efforts, efforts to convert these to other uh, type of uh, uh, applications like Petrel. It might be interesting also to, to see that in Petrel. And, and of course, they have a production uh, data. The production data, it's uh, in the file in both uh, daily and monthly format. So it's quite complete and the reports are quite, quite good. So it's the toil actually, or Equinor actually uh, made it uh, very well and make it all, the, all of this uh, available. Um, so Ankit, you, you want to continue? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, so now I would start uh, uh, with the. Uh, I would show how do you load data into PyPython? How do you how do you plot well logs? How do you make calculations on those well, well logs? How do you make plots so, so that you can you can further interpret those logs? And then in case you want to save your results, how do you export your calculations on those well logs? So for this over here, uh, sorry, yeah. So for this over here, uh, I would be uh, using a Python library called Veli. Uh, this is a part of the Agile Geoscience uh, repository. And OK, so now. Uh, so now let's start off. Uh, OK. Uh, so, to, uh, so, so to start, I would first import NumPy as MP. Import pandas. Import valley and then import uh, matplot uh, lib and plot as plt. So now, uh, once you have imported uh, our libraries, 
uh, we would go to the uh, so now over here uh, yeah, for valley we 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 uh, we import the project and the well uh, classes uh, so so when i say project it means that it it means that it's a folder uh, it's a class that that has uh, multiple wells in it and when i say well a well has multiple well logs in it uh, so over here a well is a subset of a project uh, so now i would i would like to get the list of well logs uh, so over here if you look at my left i have already created a separate folder uh, with uh, uh, with with uh, with with well blocks from 11a and 1a wells so uh, so so first of all i would like to print the print the list of well logs in this whole folder in case you have a large number of wells uh, this this thing really helps so let's do that so sorry I'll demonstrate a new cell out of this. Yeah, let's. Yeah. So now over here, uh, we have got uh, six uh, different logs over here. I'm going to remove the first log because this, this is the one we would print on later on. So let's just remove this for now. So let's let's uh, run this again. So now I've got five di different logs over here, and 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 and, and now I, I know when I try to import, I would be importing these five logs as a project. So now let's try to now let's try to do that. So now let's do create a, a project. So let's say uh, P is my project name. So it's called project. And over here, we, we use a function from last. So which means we're trying to import last files in this case. Uh, Valley specifically works more, works with last files. So that's something we need to take care about. Okay. So let's do that. Over here, I'm trying to say that import all files that would end with uh, last that have last as their data type. So, so like all these five files with with LAS as their uh, data. Type. So let's do this. OK. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not. It's small. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's do this thing. I think it's right now. Yeah. So now if you try to import those logs one after the other. So I, now it says that it, it has imported three logs, four logs, and here the fifth one. It says the time that it's uh, taken and the amount of time it takes to import each of these logs. Uh, can, can you hear me? Like it's all. Hi. Can you hear me? Can someone hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Okay. So, uh, so now once you have imported your logs. Okay. Uh, now let's try to print this log name. Okay. So that I know what logs have actually been imported. So I just write P over here because that's the name of my project. It's a print. And now I've, I've got my list of logs saying that 
I've, I've got blocks from two, uh, from three, from from five different uh, wells. That's 11A, 11B, 1A, 1B, and 1C. Uh, each uh, well, 11A has got 21 curves, 11B has got 19 curves, 1A has got 19 curves, 1B has got 22 curves, 1C has got 20, 20 curves. And these are all the names of these uh, files. So I'm just going to show you how do these files look in real. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, yeah. So so here here are, are these logs. So if I if I open one of them, so over here you said uh, you see see the well name over here. Uh, you see the unique uh, the unique well identifier one a over here. Here are my log types. So I've got caliper log uh, density, sonic, gamma, neutron, uh, resistivity logs, and 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 then these are my uh, well logs over here. So over here, min minus minus nine nine point two two five means null. So so if you go down, you would see some real uh, numbers. If you go down over here, you would see some real numbers. It, it, it. So, so I, I would see some uh, numbers, and then we would try try to work with these num num uh, num numbers in this okay. uh, exercise. I think, yes. I think I think I think I think your yeah you were blocking. There, there was a, a pop up window that was blocking the screen, but I think it's uh -huh. gone. It's it's gone okay. already. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If if you if you. I oh, mean, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I I got in all what I did wrong. Let let me. Yeah. Correct myself. Any, anyone is welcome to to ask questions whenever whenever you want. I mean, this is a pretty informal, and we can we can you can interrupt or you can ask any questions as as you go forward. Yes. In fact, if you have any particular contribution that you want to. To mention with regards to the field, or uh, that it's pretty much appreciated. So uh, let's let's encourage a, a two-way uh, communication. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Please, uh, please ask if you have any questions. So now, uh, do you see a class file open on the screen? I wanted to show you how does uh, a class file in the ball dataset look like. So over here, I want to. Uh, so so over here, we have the well name, and then we have the UWI, which is the unique well identifier. One A. These are my logs. I've got I've got caliper logs, gamma, neutron, density, resistivity logs. Okay, now let's uh, uh, let's move back to the. Uh, now let's uh, move back. Uh, to the uh, to the Jupiter, Jupiter file, okay. So for for the uh, uh, for for the uh, next step, uh, we would try to uh, ex export the data to a Pandas uh, L uh, a data frame. Pandas. Okay, so when I uh, so the reason I'm trying to do this is is because sometimes you may not want to work with the belly library, or you may want to do something that's specific to. Pandas. In that case, you, you would still have your well logs available as a data frame, and then you can easily access data in a scientific way. So let's try to do that. So I would say uh, data frame well, uh, so that's DF well. P is my project name, I would say DF. So over here, I've created a data frame. Now uh, let's try to uh, let's say I would like to 
uh, I would like to see this uh, CC the uh, CC the data in this uh, data frame. So let's do. So let's just print this uh, data frame to see what data do we exactly have in this case. So so over here I have got I've got a sample showing the wells that I have the wells that I have exported. And for further, I would like to, and further, it shows my logs. Over here, I've got depth as my base. So when we work with the Python, uh, when, when we work with the Valley library, we, we can have depth or time as the basis to, to my. Okay. Uh, now, now let's say I would like to export a subset of this uh, create uh, of this uh, data frame. So uh, so let's say uh, view a subset of the data data frame uh, from uh, two thousand five hundred uh, meters to thousand. Uh, meters depth okay uh, so so in that case let's create so let's go to our data frame and say i i, I want the data from my uh, 11a well of the valve oil field and i would say i'm i would run a query saying uh, that would say my depth should be greater than 2500 and uh, less than 3000 so once i once i do that i see that i've just exported data from uh, of of well 11a from 2500 to 3000 so so now i can Work with the, with the data range that I'm that I'm interested in. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now uh, this this was a this was a small uh, uh, small overview on 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 how can Valley well help you create a pandas data frame from the last log files. However, in this uh, project, in this uh, in this exercise, we, we, we would be working uh, specifically with the with, with the Valley library. That's the well and the project data objects. We, we would uh, we would we, we would try try to explore the capabilities of the Valley library library so 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 let's say one once i have my uh, project imported or my pro project uh, created over here i would like to create a well from this uh, project else i would like to extract a specific well from the from the well log project i just uh, created so create a well object from my project. Okay. So I would say I would like to create well 11a. Okay, from my project P, I would say get well. That's my function. And I and I would specify the well name. Okay. Okay. So let's print uh, the well that I exported from the project. So so over here, I've got basic data about the well uh, that got exported from the project. So over here, it says uh, it says from what country is it? The location is the area is the is the is the area of the well over here. It's the most inspired jackup rig that was used to drill the well. The latitude, the longitude, and the well logs that I have in for this well 
now uh, now uh, now i'm going to show you how to uh, plot this well log okay uh, now that i've created a a, a a well object from the project i would like to plot the gamma ray log and the new, new and and the, and the newton porosity density logs okay so let's let's try to do that so plot 11 a log okay so uh, so so for that i would i would like to first know what section of the well that i'm interested in to st study so that would ob obviously be the hugin formation so uh, once you go to the okay uh, let me uh, change my screen so yeah so so now you see the wall fold folder on on the screen over here we have got um, so over here if you go to the petrophysical in interpretation of well 11 a you'll find the pet petrophysical report okay so now okay uh, so now in this uh, Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I have to share, share, share my screen again. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So now you see the petrophysical rep, uh, rep report. In this uh, petrophysical report, uh, if you if you, at the end of the report, I'm sorry. Uh, okay if you look at the petrophysical report uh, for well 11a i i don't think i can read the screen i'll let me try to give you the best view over here uh, so over here you would see that uh, the hugin of uh, formation uh, starts from around uh, 3790 over here that's called the upper hugin for formation and then it further ends at around uh, 3700 so so uh, so in this exercise you would like to work from 3000 you have a you have problem. a box uh, at the bottom i'm again i'm sorry. sorry i'm sorry yeah so now you have uh, you have uh, so now over here we would like to work from slightly above 3000 Six hundred to slightly below three thousand seven hundred. So let's move to the Jupiter workbook. Yeah. So now I would create a segment from the well, well, eleven A. So that would be a well eleven A. Uh, so when I say two bases, bases over here is depth. So I would like to have my. I'm sorry for the screen again. Okay. So now I would like to have my uh, my depth from three thousand five hundred and nine ninety to my depth of three thousand seven hundred and ten. That's exactly the the range for the Hurricane formation. So, so what I did over here is I, uh, I tried to export the gamma ray log of the 11 a well. I tried to export the log from a depth of 3,590 to 3,710 meters into a into a seg segment. Uh, object uh, similarly i try to export uh, my i try to export other logs that i would be working with in this exercise so uh, so over here i am exporting the neutron 
porosity logs. Uh, then I'm trying to export the density logs. So that's row B. And then I would export the deep resistivity log. So that's RT. Or, and in case of wall, uh, in, in case of the wall uh, last files, it's called RPCHM. Okay, so now we have so so now we have exported four logs from the belt eleven a. Uh, now I would try to plot these logs. Uh, so uh, so let's say that uh, so 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 to plot the logs, we are gonna make use of some matplotlib plotly functions. Uh, this is a pretty standard library used in Python to make plots. So let's export the figure and axis and say, so, so I would like, like to create a plot with, 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 the, uh, with one row and uh, two columns. Uh, uh, let's say I would have a constrained uh, layout. And uh, we have a figure size of uh, five ten. Yeah. Let, let me run. It's not. Yeah, there's something wrong. Okay. The matplotlib was not imported properly at the beginning. Uh, it's but plugly at the beginning it was not so important. I think it something went wrong. Uh, can you hear me, Ankit? Ankit, can, can you hear me? Can, Ankit, can you hear me? Hello. Uh, can anyone hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, you yeah. think yes, sir. it has is having an issue? I think we lost him for for a bit. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, the connection uh, just disconnected. I'm sorry. Uh, Ankit, someone is uh, texting and saying that it looks a bit uh, small. I don't know if you can uh, minimize your left uh, panel and then zooming a bit on the on the notebook. Yeah, sure. Sure, I'll do that. Thank you. Just give me a second. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, so I'm back. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm sharing a long notebook again. So I'm going to disconnect. So I'm going to ask uh, if uh, they can download the data from the GitHub itself. Uh, well, I don't know, Ankit, but what I'm going to do is just put the files that I'm going to use for the example. And the rest of the files, if you want to download it, you have to go through the 
through the Equino, Equinor uh, website. You just Google Equinor Wolf data set and you can download the whole data set uh, yourself. But I think uh, um, it is uh, best if uh, we only put in the GitHub repo what we are going to use for the exercise. Okay. Uh, Ankit, I was telling you at the beginning that your matplotlib didn't import yes. correctly. So you may have a typo at the beginning. Yes, yes. Let me do that. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So now you see my. Uh, yes. So uh, you see, see my screen, right? And yeah. the, the size should be better. At, yeah. I don't know. The screen. Okay. So let's see what's wrong over here. Uh, your PLT is not defined. So at the beginning, you should have an issue with your your matplotlib import. You see? I think it's just. Uh, yeah, no module, no module name at blood. Oh, okay, yep, you're right. Pi plot. It's pi plot. Yep, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So now let's see if it works. Oh, it's still not working. Okay. So what's wrong? Uh, yeah, no, I, I get what's wrong. So it's. Okay, uh, and rows, and rows. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. So now we have a blank, uh, blank uh, space, a blank figure. Uh, so now over here, uh, I plot the gamma log. Okay. Okay, there's something wrong. Okay, okay, okay. I get my mistake. Uh, so over here, uh, it's, it's uh, score well A, so it's well on the score. Yeah, then. So plot must be not. Just okay. So uh, it's not subscribable because you only have one one axe because it's a uh, one by one. So you uh, shouldn't have uh, the bracket square bracket zero, I guess. Now let me try. Okay, yeah, you're right. So I was actually trying to create uh, two logs, uh, two columns. This case. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So now over here we have got the gamma ray log. Okay. Uh, so now we would, so now I'm gonna put in the code to to I'm gonna uh, directly put the code uh, to plot uh, the density neutron and the uh, the uh, the density and the neutron porosity logs so let's run the code over here okay to so like so so just to give you an overview of, of what i just did 
over here, I set the limit of the gamma ray log from zero to 120. I, I fill, the, fill the space uh, of the gamma ray log from uh, 150 to the gamma ray uh, log. So from 150, from here, the space is filled. Something that's important over here is to un understand the, the importance of, of using the basis. So, so basis is essentially over here, our, our, uh, over here, it is our, our, it is our Y axis. So as you see, Y axis is the depth. Similarly, uh, we plot the uh, neutron log uh, from uh, 0.45 to minus of 0.15, and then we plot the density log from 1.95 to 2.0 from 1.95 to 2.95. Uh, we then plot the two logs. And then this part is used to fill up the section, uh, to fill, fill up the overlap between neutron porosity and the, and the density log. This is a very standard method uh, to identify zones uh, that have got hydrocarbon uh, present in them. So, so, over here, we see that the, the sand does have a very strong hydrocarbon uh, signature. So now moving ahead. Uh, okay, uh, so now I showed you how to plot data for one specific well. Now I'm gonna show you how to plot logs. How do you compare logs of, of, of different wells. Uh, in this case, our project has got uh, wells from five different uh, wells. So now, over, so now we are gonna compare the gamma ray log of these five wells uh, pres present in the project. So we are going to plot all the gamma ray logs in the project. Sorry. Project. So again, uh, export the figure and axis. Uh, So when I say length of P, I'm just saying that it's the number of columns will be equal to the number of wells that I have in my project P. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna first of all. Uh, uh, Put in the code over here to plot since this code is meant to plot and uh, not nothing beyond that. So once I run this code, I should see all the five logs, uh, all the five wells, the Kamare logs are plotted for all, all the five wells. So over here, uh, so so what did I exactly do? So I uh, so I first export the gamma ray log of 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 every well. Later, I would uh, plot uh, I would plot this uh, gamma ray logs into 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 each column. 
and and then said that i title for for this uh, uh, these logs so like over here i got 11a 11b 1a 1b uh, and then uh, this is uh, so this would be a 1c okay i'm not sure why don't we have a name for this it should be somewhere here but then we can look into that later okay okay so now i'm going to show you how to do uh, i'm going to show you how, how to do these spiking so in case i do not do this packing over here uh, let's see what happens okay uh, now let us uh, remove this okay so now uh, so now if you do look at uh, uh, log uh, uh, log 1c the range of uh, gamma ray is uh, very uh, uh, you can see the log pretty clearly you don't see a very large distraction the one that you would see now so if i plot it like this you see that the log gets it gets compressed because you have got one particular value that is very high and then and then the valley library helps you remove such anomalies helps you filter them from the from the data set so over here i would do uh, so i would do this spiking over here i i would get the well data of the well one see get the gamma ray log and it's move with a with a wind window i'm sorry i did it did it connect again hello uh, uh, can you hear me yes Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear Anki? Uh, can you hear me? I think we can hear you. It looks like Anki may have frozen. All right. Let's give him a chance. I think he's uh, about to finish. Uh, yeah, yeah. The I'm exercise. just about to finish. Yeah. I'm All right. About to finish. Yeah. Okay. I'm so yeah. sorry. It again disconnected. Okay. Let me just get this done. Uh, let me just complete this section. Uh, okay. So I'm uh, here. Right. Okay. So now, once we are we are done with these plots, uh, let's move to the next section. Once we are we are done with the method on uh, removing these uh, spikes, uh, you would see that the log is much better once I smoothen it, and you don't see it very compressed now. So now you can actually. Com compare different uh, sections, uh, different parts of the of this log. Uh, uh, now let's move to the next section. Uh, let's do our uh, calculate the permeability and uh, the porosity and the porosity. So over here, uh, I was just uh, doing some formulas over here. So let us do that. Um, so, so, so then uh, phi f is my final porosity. Uh, the, these are very standard form formulas used. Uh, they are also mentioned. I'm so sorry. They are. Uh, I'm sorry. They are also mentioned. OK, so so these formulas are also mentioned on the petrophysical uh, uh, report over here. You would see a lot of form formulas over here. And I use uh, these formulas to make the. Calculations, uh, so here you would see the for formula for the permeability and over here you would see the formula for the for, for the shield volume and here for the porosity. Uh, okay. 
so let's so let us complete uh, that section so using those form formulas i would i would uh, calculate the the volume of shale the permeability and the water saturation now i would like to make a cross plot so let's run this yeah so now make a cross plot of uh, the final porosity and the um, permeability. So again, uh, again, since it's a plot, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, gonna put the code in, and that would save some time too. Okay. So now I would plot these two uh, logs. I think I think I, you're showing your second screen. I'm sorry. Yeah, so now do you see my screen? Yes, 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 thank you. Okay, so now uh, you would see the plot over here. And then I wanted to show, show you here that uh, that that some points have a very high permeability and and then these points actually correspond to the thief zone that I had shown in the presentation. This uh, this uh, this this is a very good idea about the porosity distribution with a permeability distribution. Okay, uh, so now let's go to the last section of this exercise over here. I would like to export my uh, saturation my water saturation, my calculated uh, city permeability uh, and uh, my shale fractions. Okay, so so let us uh, let's do that. So now uh, uh, so now I took my calculated variable and then created a, 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 a new curve in the in the well 11a data type and similarly I would do the same for the porosity and the and the shale volume fraction. Now that I've created curves of permeability, porosity, and the shale of fraction, I would export them. So, so that would be I would create a, a well called 11a and say two plus in this case. Okay, since I would export it and I, and I'll have to give it a name. So that would be exported. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that Ankit was about to finish and export that file. Uh, just give me another minute. Oh, yes, here I am yes. done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. Uh, let me let me share my screen. Let me uh, just. Yeah, I'll share my screen. Uh, So let me share my screen. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yes. So I would create a name and say that I'll have and and this well will have certain keys to be uh, which would be permeability, the porosity, and the 
the fraction. So once you run this thing, you will see a new for folder, uh, a new new well log getting created. So when I op open this file, you would see the uh, you would see the well well log over here, uh, where I have the depth. Uh, the permeability, porosity, and the shield fraction exported, and over here you have the data. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's all I had for this. Uh, thank you for for being here. Th yeah. Thank you, Ankit. Thank you. Thank you.